um, happy to welcome you to this lecture. I want to have this class pre-recorded for the purpose of those people that may possibly not be able to join us virtually and for those people that may possibly not be able to join us face to face if at all we are going to have. Okay. And lastly, I want to have it recorded so that we can have it listened to over and over and over. Then the, I'm going to have the, the lecture videos done twice. This is the first part. The second part, I will do it then. We know that for this course, we have two videos. I don't want the length to be too long so that we can listen to it on our own and hold that. Here we'll be talking about GST401 by the title Concepts and Opportunities in Social Entrepreneurship. But there's no way we can talk about what a social entrepreneurship is all about without knowing exactly what an entrepreneurship is all about, without knowing who is an entrepreneur, without knowing what then is social entrepreneurship, right? When we are talking about entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship, an entrepreneurship has to do with process of identifying problems, right? Sitting down with that problem. Now, looking deeper in that problem and seeing solution innovating solution out of the problem for the purpose of creating and growing a business let me repeat it again you were able to identify a problem people are sitting down talking about a problem you are sitting down with them talking about a problem then you have a pause what about opportunities that may possibly be in this problem at that point of you making the pause, now you are taking on a cap of entrepreneurship. Because in that problem, you are identifying opportunities. After you have seen the opportunities, then you take risk towards bringing the, the innovative ideas into reality. An example is this. We all gather up at the park that we want to join Shotu from here to so so place and you've been sweating every day everybody seems to be sitting down and facing the same direction but you just have a pause what if we make a business out of this okay how is the business going to do? at that point of you thinking that that is entrepreneurship instinct coming out of you right now the process of you identifying things that are needed Things that needed to be put in place, who to be contacted, authorities to be approached, those processes, they are the business models that you put in place. At the end of everything, you were able to now bring in people from motor parks, commercial parks, to come up joining the shuttle, the shuttle buses within the uh, permanent site. So with that, they were able to reduce the crowd. They were able to satisfy people's uh, demand. They were able to meet people's demand of going X, Y, Z places. Now, the process of, okay, we spoke with Dean, we spoke with the VC, we wrote this letter, all those processes. We don't want to know. What we are all after is you have taken the risk of identifying opportunities where there is a problem. Okay, you've taken a risk, then you started a business, you grew the business to the point that the business started fetching you money. That is what entrepreneurship is all about. Okay, now, the entrepreneur now is somebody that went through the whole process. There is a problem, there is a challenge, but you are not seeing the challenge, you are seeing opportunities. That's the reason when you see an entrepreneur, the glory in problem, the glory in challenges. As, you, as Nigerians are shouting and Talking about dollar increasing, an entrepreneur is making money out of this situation. How? We, we wouldn't know. Because it would now take his time to understand what is the root cause of the problem. Try to know, okay, who are the people that I can possibly make connections with? How can I get this thing? Then make my money out of it. That is who an entrepreneur So the process of you now identifying the problem, Taking that risk is what is called entrepreneurship. It is a process that we call entrepreneurship. The person that actually now went through the process is called an entrepreneur, right? Now, a social entrepreneur, 
on the other hand, is not with the sole aim of making money. The first target, the first primary aim of a social entrepreneur is to create a social environmental and cultural solution now the problem we are talking about here it could be a problem whichever problem but the sole aim of a social entrepreneur is to make sure that that problem is solved it is the primary aim is not okay how am i going to make money out of this problem the primary aim of a social entrepreneur is how can I solve this problem and make sure that the problem is permanently solved? The solution is sustainably maintained. You understand? So, a social entrepreneur is now an individual who applies all social all entrepreneurial principles. Applying all those principles, why? Just to address social, cultural, and environmental challenges. You've gone to school. All of the essence of you going to school is now to go to a particular community to identify their problems and solve the problem. Now, in solving the problem, you will need to make connections. It may take some financial requirements, uh, responsibilities, and all of that from you. It may take this, it may take that. They don't want to know. They want to just see the problem solved, right? So you are a potential social entrepreneur to your locality, to your environment, to your society, right? So now, when you are able to sit down, you're able to identify solution to a particular problem in a particular society. It could be a cultural problem. It could be a social environmental problem, but the, the point of you sitting down looking for solution, a sustainable solution that is economically viable. I need to put it there. That is economically viable, right? And after it's been, it is economically viable, the primary aim is to create a social impact. You understand? Now, a social entrepreneur, they are driven by desire to create positive social change and improve well-being of communities unlike a traditional or conventional entrepreneur who is all housed to make money just as i said as we do not have sufficient dollars in nigeria right now many people many entrepreneurs are making the, 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 the process because they have been able to amass a whole lot of dollars themselves right and they make it they make the scarcity to trigger the, the price and with that they are making money that is not a social entrepreneur right so a social entrepreneur is all hard to see okay how can this problem be solved and the people will be happy and people now the happy in this sense now could be oh we realize in this community they are academically backward that's a social problem you've been able to identify which is in in, in, in let me say inequal ed, ed, access to education then how can you solve it now you make collaboration with this person you make collaboration with you make a, at the end of the day you were able to bring a trust fund a, a, a educational trust fund to the community so from there you were able to make it makes economic essence in the sense that there are one or two or three naira coming to you from there but at the at the, uh, uh, at the, at the immediate instance you are making a solution creating solution to that problem because it was the the solution you brought now was able to bring people out of the streets. They started attending the school, attending schools. After attending schools, they became one or two or three professors. In, so they will come back to the society and directly influence society. And you're actually the start of the whole process. So that makes you a social entrepreneur. Now, the essence is that you are driven by the desire to create a positive social change, unlike a conventional entrepreneur who is all how to make money, right? Now, the, the social entrepreneur, they identify innovative solutions to pressing social challenges, social problems, and they develop sustainable ventures, okay, initiatives to implement these solutions. Now, when we are not talking about a social entrepreneurship, it's just like entrepreneurship. Now, it's somebody that practices, eh, that puts into place entrepreneurial principles and methods to create and sustain ventures or initiatives that generate, generate positive social, cultural, and environmental impact. We have and we have issues on ground. So with your knowledge of social entrepreneurship, you brought 
collaborations in place, you brought, brought partnerships in place, any commit, financial community you're able to bring them collaborate, then you, you, you're you able to put some business models in place. And at the end of the day, you were able to find solutions to that process. So the process, the practice of you doing that is what is called social entrepreneurship. Why you as an individual are doing that is called social entrepreneur, right? Now, social entrepreneurship involves identifying social problems, as I said before, developing inno innovative solutions and implementing these solutions. There was a time I was giving a lecture, I think to, to your, your younger ones, maybe I think 200 or 300 level, where we kept talking about innovations, we're talking about creativity and all of that. You are, you are in faculty of education, you need, you need food, right? And there are no food, there are no ways to, until you go to market. But instead of you complaining, you were thinking, okay, how, how, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Okay, I want a situation, I want to develop a business model. The business model in such a way that we can order food where we are, and in less than five minutes, the food will be with us. Eh? Then, what would be the benefit of in, in these things? Number one, the people that are hungry can easily make order for the food. People that want to sell, that are looking for buyer wherever they are, they will get clients even from afar. Now, the medium of moving the food from wherever the food was to where the buyer is. We need commuters. Maybe we need Kakena Pep. You are creating business for the person. So in the whole process, now you now realize, let's let's let let let's put it for example, in the community, let's say permanent site, we realize there are insecurity, and the insecurity issues were triggered by maybe some people that do not have work to do. And we now realize okay, how can we engage them? Yes. We have students that are in faculty of education, institute of education, and there are no food vendors there. Okay. Now, how can we engage these guys? Do they know how to ride bike? Yes, they said they know how to ride. Oh, fine. Let's create business for them. Okay? Now, these people that are in faculty of education, they need their food. One plate is 500 naira. But they are going to pay just 50 naira, right? 50 naira for, for the delivery. Now, they said, ah, why won't I? Because even for me to take keke to market and come back, it's going to be a whole lot more than 50 naira. I'm going to pay. So, 500 and 50 naira, no problem. I'll pay. Then, now, you have created business for somebody that is causing mayhem that is causing problem in the society because he's engaged now so when he's engaged is getting out of the 15 era maybe his own court so to say is 20 naira is let's say let's even say 30 naira why you that initiated the, the the idea you have 20 naira okay now you have been able to strategically create a social solution to a particular problem in a particular community I'm just using permanent side for example. The same thing could happen in, in any locality. The first point is you are trying to see these people are hungry. They need food and they need to eat. And yes, we keep having problems. This is like there is insecurity. They keep going to steal. They keep doing this. And who are the people stealing? These are the people. Why? Because they do not have money and they know how to ride back. So what can we do for them? Okay, let's get care for them let's get this for them let's get it for them. you the process of you doing that developing that business model is what is called social entrepreneurship why you are the social entrepreneur right now social entrepreneur you can go through the material on your home maybe you are you can come to the website the website and you see it there and if you have any comments you can drop it there okay a social entrepreneur is otherwise known as community oriented organization it is the process by which it could be an individual it could be a group of people. It could be a group of community people. And it could be a group of entrepreneurs. All they needed, to, all they want to do is to develop and find solutions that directly address social, cultural, and environmental issues. Just as I said, this key point differentiates them from an entrepreneur. Social entrepreneurs are different from entrepreneurs. How? Because they develop and fund solutions. Why? Because they want to solve social, cultural, and environmental challenges. But for conventional entrepreneurs, they develop and fund solutions. Why? Because they want to make financial benefits solely. Now, another point that I want to also note I want you to notice also this social entrepreneurship social businesses they thrive quicker 
faster and longer okay and the reason is because you are going to be involving the people that are directly affected by the problem and with that you have emotionally connected them to solving the problems themselves while you are making a spend of it you are creating a bigger solution for them so you are it's like you are building a fulcrum you are building a channel that will outlive you let's take for example we have we have solutions technologically we have social media handles we have social social media network we have instagram we have facebook we have lots of them they developed it the primary aim was oh so that so people could be communicating right but see what they are making out of it now and it is beneficial to me because i could easily make a a, a, a message from my own hand i push it to the, to the social media communities and they get feedback i enjoy myself right there while they are also making their money so just how much more will it have been difficult if it is not a solution that is driven by creating solution i mean if it is not a solution that is people driven and what did they do they host they simply sat at the back end they're doing some coding they identify doing some little algorithm some an analytics then they were able to identify this identify this then they do their own little work from their own back and they did two in quotes right so from there i'm enjoying it and they are making their money from there i can build my business i can make some ads for my business they make their money i make my money from there we have a lot of people that are building their businesses on these platforms so you can see how sustainable such business could be okay now let's continue now look around you what are the social vices cultural issues community challenges that you think you could develop social entrepreneurship ideas on keep thinking about it because this will form part of what we will likely use for our C and possibly even the questions for for the exam because it's all revolves around all of these things so for example i have listed the examples of cultural social and environmental issues in nigeria that we could leverage on as a social entrepreneur number one is access to clean water number two is youth employment gender inequality waste management in my locality let's assume we have waste poorly managed right is a problem in addition to that we have going guys we have guys around they are out of school children they do not have what they do but i was able to now locate a, a location i was able to locate a place where we could be dumping our refuge managing our refuge properly but i cannot be doing that right because i'll be going to work but these guys that are out of school why are they out of school they're out of school because they do not have money they do not have money because they do not have work and our waste is being poorly managed what if we contract these guys to be going from houses then we can come up with maybe a uniform for them come up with possibly a channel for them come up with a, a formal arrangement for them they'll go pick one two three from they put it in this place they go drop it and they make some money from there you understand maybe from money from the money i have little change that i also get from there okay number one i've been able to successfully solve the problem of poor waste management number two i've been able to successfully take those guys out of the street number three i've been able to bring these guys back to school and invariably i'm solving the social problem you understand my point now so it's it's it is that's that's one angle it could be access to health care equal equal, uh, equal uh, education quality environmental degradations rural development a host of them okay when you look around you realize there are several people that have business ideas but they do not have the financial resources and isn't that the reason we have multi-purpose multi-purpose banks the cooperative banks we have why because they want to give loans to these local people so that they can develop their locality they can develop themselves right why the bank is also making money 
that, those are the, the, the ideas that we will come up with. In this locality, we have lots of farmers. In fact, we have 95% of people, of families being farmers. The heads of, I'm a farmer. We are 100 in, in the entire community. Of the 100, 96 are farmers. Right? These 96, the, 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 the guys, the, the men there, we say, okay, there's going to be a farmer's association. And the essence of the farmer association is for us to now gather up. We want to have access to loan. We want to have access to this. We want to have access to this. Then we now come up with a business model. Without we're, able, we're able to solve this problem. We're able to solve this problem. That is what social entrepreneurs do. Okay? Now, a social entrepreneur, therefore, is a person who explores business opportunities that have a positive impact on their community. The primary aim is positive impact on the community. Unlike a traditional enterprise, who is all house or a tra traditional ent entrepreneur, who is all house to making money, right? Making ends meet for himself. But these ones, they are after positive impact on their community and they might then make financial benefit from it, right? Now, social entrepreneurship is, is an approach by an individual group or set up company, startup companies that develop, they fund and they implement solutions to social, cultural and environmental problems, challenges, issues. Okay? Now you can read a whole lot more after that. Very quickly, I want to talk about the goal of social entrepreneurship. I basically have these four, and in addition to it, I have other, I think seven, six, right? One, what are their goals? They want to bring lasting societal change. Lasting societal change. That is the primary goal. Why conventional or traditional entrepreneur is all about creating wealth. Creating wealth, that's one. Number two, for a social entrepreneurship, they want to do what? Involve people in solving the problem. Why traditional entrepreneur may necessarily not involve people? Try to note that. In you involving the people, you are trying to hard hold a fulcrum, so to say, in the engine so that it can be autopiloting while you are doing less because you are evo you are involving the people that are having the problem in solving the problem you understand that's the second one the third one so they work to address social social and environmental problems using entrepreneurial principles and what determines their sources is how much of social impact their efforts have been made, have been able to make. How much of social impact they have been able to make, that determines how successful they are. Inversely, traditional entrepreneur, it is how much they have in their account that determines their sources. Okay? The fourth one. They are often referred to as social purpose businesses. Social purpose businesses. Let me also point this out here. You may identify a particular locality. They do not have lights there. And all you could do for them was to buy them a transformer to connect light from XYZ community. You are just a philanthropist. You are just a charity giver. You are not a social entrepreneur. When we're talking about social entrepreneur, it is a business model. You employ business model, involve people in the process. And after that, you have a sustainable model to make sure that the transformer is saved, to even secure the transformer. So when you involve people in the whole process, it then becomes a social purpose business. You understand my point? What if you, you're done giving them and they, they went to vandalize it. You understand? Why? Because they weren't involved in the whole process. But in a situation where they were involved in the process, is it in gathering the money? Is it in, in installing it? 
then in monitoring it you're able to identify some xyz people that will be doing the monitoring so with that it becomes a social purpose businesses other goals are social impact the sustainability empowerment innovation collaboration and partnerships then systemic change social impact as per the effect the primary effect what determines the essence is the impact such a social entrepreneurship effort has been able to make in the community number one you put in front of you i have this problem i want to solve and how you will be able to determine oh have i been able to solve it is okay how much of this problem i've been able to reduce or entirely quenched fine i realize okay i've been able to now have i put in place measures to institutionalize the solution so that it wouldn't occur again those are not the thinking of a traditional entrepreneur okay another point is sustainability sustaining the solution you have been able to put in place through people another point is empowerment you involve those guys that the, the primary beneficiaries of, of the of, of the of the solution you involve them you empower them another point is innovation you seek to drive innovation in, address, in addressing social changes. Different approaches. That's the reason when you see people sitting down. Okay, I think I was taking three, 200 level students some time ago. So then, okay, what are the challenges that you think you have? One student told me that they have challenge of cost materials. I said, okay, now let's develop a business out of that. How can we do that? Then we started talking. It's okay. Let's... Determine, let's decide that we are going to develop a material for all education courses, 400 level, all education courses of 400 level, or then we'll put it all together in a document. Number one, we are trying to solve a problem for all 400 level education faculty. Number two, we want to gather up all courses in one material. Number three, we want to make all the material to be in soft copy, available by PDF or Word document. Number four, we want to make the material available in audio so that people can transfer it from their phone and be listening to it, from their devices to their devices and be listening to it. Number five, we will now sell it for less. You understand? We we'll sell it for less. That is initiative. That is innovation. You understand? you are out to solve a problem first not just the money if it were money i would go to xyz lecturers and get materials that they have produced and put it on bookshelf they sold it they gave me for one thousand i will sell you one thousand five then i make my money from there you see the primary aim is not really for you to get it it's for me to just make 500 on top of it so that's the reason if you decided not to Buy from me. I go to somebody else that can buy from me because what I, I, I don't give a damn. What I need is five five hundred naira on top of the money, right? Now the next one is collaboration and partnership. Just as I said before, you do not develop a solution for a community without involving them. That's one of the key goals of social entrepreneurship. You collaborate. You do partnership where necessary. You collaborate with government functionaries. You collaborate with NGOs. You collaborate with the community itself. You come and collaborate with individuals, leverage on resources. The community, okay, yeah, me, I can, I can provide you guys cement. The community say, oh, we need water. Oh yeah, don't worry, me, I have borehole. I'll, su I'll supply borehole. So what do you have? So with that, you'll be able to leverage on resources that are available. Why? Because you are providing a problem. You are providing a solution for them, right? So you seek necessary collaboration. These are not principles of traditional entrepreneurs. Okay, because the traditional entrepreneurs they, they sit down to factor in all of this, then they go all out to make their money. That's the reason the primary aim is to make money. Okay, because every all of this, every of this headache, they, they sat down themselves to solve it. But for social entrepreneurship, you must collaborate. And that point is systemic change. Okay, now the next one I want to talk about is how does it, how does ent social enterprise work? Okay, the primary purpose, as we said, is to solve a social, cultural, or environmental challenge. 
and it's not really for the prof for the profit, but you might make profit from there. But the point is, all the entrepreneurial skills that you might have, you bring them all together. Those from private, from pro public, all to make sure that you were able to solve a problem. Solve a problem, create a solution in a particular society, in a particular community. It is connected to that community. Your success is connected to that impact. Your success is connected to how you have been able to better the life of people. Number one, we have to sit down. Okay, what what are we even trying to achieve at the end of the day? We are trying to make sure that we we are we we're able to withdraw people from the street so that they will be in the school. Okay, how how then can we do that? What do you have? Uh, yeah, me I did education. Okay, you sir, what do you have? I, I did banking. Um, I work in a bank. Okay, you what do you have? So from that we were able to come up with educational trust fund. Right? We now say that, okay, for these guys that are on the streets, how much is their school fee? They said their school fee is 10,000 naira per 10. Okay, what we are going to do is they will go into an agreement with us. They are six years in primary school. We will sponsor it. But at the end of school, they will be doing XYZ for this community. Maybe they will be doing this, they will be doing this, they will be doing this. Number one, we have been able to success. You know, it's, this is not well thought of. I'm just coming up with an idea now, okay? Now, they be, number one, we've been able to bring them out of the street. And at the end of six years, we realize they're out of school. They gain admission to university. They become something else. Number one, they, they, be, they were able to become something reasonable to themselves, to the community as well. So they come back to, to effects. So now, our success is bringing them out of the streets which was our primary goal. Another point could be environmental challenges. We realize that there are blockage on the on the highway. Okay, how can we you come up with an idea? Just as I just as I said, it must be ideas that are economical because you will need money to run some of them. But the primary goal is not the money. The primary goal is to make a social impact. Now let's look at keynotes about social entrepreneurship, the qualities and the, the keynotes about them, what are the things that are most peculiar to them? It is achieved through experience, knowledge, and passion. You can come to my house, pick a broom, sweep my entire house. When you're done sweeping, you went to the kitchen, you cook. When you're done cooking, you are cleaning my TV, cleaning my AC, I will ask you, Auntie, come, 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 come. What's your interest? What is your passion? What's your motive? Eh, uh, actually, eh, uh, uh, can't we be together? Yes, you understand now. That is the passion. That is the goal. Now, I I come to your community. I can't start effecting a a change. Start. You must have passion. There must be a goal. You must you must be empathetic. You must be you there must be love inside of you. you there is there is there is something deep down you that you want to achieve the the social goal, the the vision that you have, the passion that you have for them to just make sure that this problem needs to go. You understand? I just want to realize that this guy is is he can't be alone. I, I want to help him. I want to do this. Of course, in the process, there must be something that will come out to me. But the first point, the starting point is that he needs, he needs, he needs, a, 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 a pro, he needs a solution. Then you go all out to solve the problem for the person, to, to the community. You go all out to solve the problem for the, 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 the solve the problem for the community, provide solution. So, and it is it is born out of the fact that you have an idea, you you are experienced, you have the knowledge of how to go about it. That's the thing. The social enterprise, it might not be entirely what you are. You have something to. do. You know something about, but you might have to do research about it. Okay, how can we do this? How can we do this? From that's knowledge. So now it could be from worth of experience. Okay, we can use this. We can use. I think we encountered this before. Okay, we can use this. Then you now have passion to solving the problem for the community. Then you go all out. Okay, so it is achieved through these key key things: experiences, knowledge, and passion. Just like number two, just like entrepreneurs are not marked from birth. Eh? Social entrepreneurs too, they are not born with it. 
they develop the empathy. Okay? It is not born with them. Of course, you know, nobody is born with an idea of end up being an entrepreneur. It is a decision they made on their own, right? And it's a decision you, you, you can also make. Just as, just as I said before, people are staying there at the curve ground looking for boss. And everybody's there. But you now deciding that, oh, yeah, can, can't we find solutions to this problem? You're able to approach them. You receive a letter to the VC. You receive a letter to this person. You receive a letter to this person. At the end of the day, we just realize there are new bosses coming from the town. Okay, when we now have like 20 more buses joining the shuttle, now we now realize that the crowd had gone down. That the problem you want to solve is making sure that the students don't suffer, right? You've been able to solve that. Now, the buses that you're able to bring in, maybe it is 10% or 5% you have from their income. Now you're making your money from there. But the primary essence, what drove you into that is making sure that these guys shouldn't be staying on the on the on the on the queue for long for a long time, right? Now the third point is it is not so much a, a career, it is like a calling. It's like you are committed to it because you know something that is not financially driven. It's not that you are all hard to make money there. It's it's more like you are committed. You are called to do it. You do it passionately because nothing is coming in from for you at the at least at the instance. Because what you want to do is you want to make the social impact. And of course, it might not come with benefit. I mean, with financial benefits. But at the end of the day, you realize that you're able to achieve what you want to do, and some money comes in for you. So it is much more than a career. It is like a calling. Another point is that when, when, whenever you start it, you must have the, the, the doggedness to see it through. Okay? It's not something that you start and you stop halfway. You must have, you know, as part of the quality of an entrepreneur, resilience is there, right? So you must make sure that whatever you started, because you are pulling people into it, you must stay true. To make sure that you achieve it at the end of the day. Now let's look at these important qualities that make a successful entrepreneur. Number one, deep empathy. Just as I said before, you must have an empathy on the community before you can aim to solve a problem for them. This empathy allows you to truly understand their needs, challenges, and aspirations before looking at how to help them, right? Because you can't just say you want to help them without having empathy for them. And that point is innovation. You must be innovative. Because that community is not just for one person. There are tens, hundreds of them there. But you want to stand out. And what makes you stand out is the innovation. You don't want to think the way others have been thinking. But you want to drive them. Now, after you have been able to think through Think through, and you be you in your thoughts. You're able to see the light. You want to pull them from their darkness to their light, and that's the process of engagement, involvement, that's in partnership, and all of that. And that point is a systemic view. A successful social entrepreneur, they understand that social problems are often deeply interconnected. When I was giving you an instance, there is no road leading to this community and i intend to kind of help in doing that we dug we did the road but we realized in a short while people are vandalizing what we have this what we have done then we make we made an inquiry they say it is so so gang we're able to get in touch with them we realize all they do is smoke from morning till afternoon, they do nothing. Then we get to house them, said they are graduates. They are frustrated, they, know they have nothing they are doing. Okay, how can we help them? Okay, we now employ them as security for our community. Now look at where solution is coming from. We are trying to protect something. We have to dig deep to these people. Dig deep to, so it is, it is an understanding that we have that you don't just solve a problem on the surface. You go deep to the roots of the problem and solve it. 
that is what this concept is talking about. It's telling us that a social entrepreneur has that quality of understanding that a social problem should be seen systematically. You should see it that their problems are interconnected. As you think you are solving this, another one is coming. So just go straight down to the roots and pull it out. Okay. You must be able to, they also have the quality of creating a sustainable model. Because when, when you are saying you are building a business solution for a particular community, for a society, it must be sustainable. It's not a business model that you develop and it stays just for one year or, or two months or and it goes off. You must put measures in place in such a way that it stays over time, right? They, are, they involve change makers. That's the partnership I talked about on like the traditional uh, uh, entrepreneur. You must seek and uh, you must seek collaboration. You must seek partnership. This could be from NGO. It could be from community itself. It could be from other businesses that have that have the like minds. Their essence is to okay now let's come come together. Let's leverage on resources that that me I have that you have and let's solve a problem for this community. Okay. Then they amplify their impact and create meaningful change at scale. The next one is resilience. I told you that since financial benefit is not primarily the target, you must be ready to face challenges and you must be resilient to face it through. Okay? This is one of the qualities as well. Adaptability, collaboration, visionary leadership and all that. Data-driven decision-making. This is one of the qualities as well. It's successful entrepreneur rely on data and not hearsay not superstition not my alpha said this not my pastor said this not this not that data data that clearly shows you the source of the problem data that shows you the degree of the problem data that qualitatively and quantitatively show you where the problems are coming from and the projection of the problem impact if not attended to now so you deal with the data with that, you'll be able to guide yourself through. They gather and analyze relevant data to understand the root causes of social problem. You make interview. If survey is needed, you do. If anything that you, any methodology, whatever that you need to you use them just to get the facts. Okay. Then you go all out. Cultural competence and all of that. You are mindful of the fact that you are dealing with people, so you must respect their traditions, you must respect their unknown because you need them to be part of the solution. Okay, you need their partnership, you need their involvement, persistence, capacity to learn, and all of that. Now, the last one that I want to talk about in this video is benefits of social entrepreneurship. Number one, stronger customer and client relationship. You are dealing with people, right? Then you must have relationships, you must have that skill. Okay, when you are talking about when you are talking about having a social impact, we are, we are talking about dealing with society. We are talking about dealing with people. The benefit is it helps you now as an individual to have relationship with them. We don't say, oh, um, I'm an introvert. I I don't deal with people. Uh, no, no. Once you are an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur, you 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 have the you have the impetus. You have the instinct of a strong customer and client relationship. You'll be able to know how to manage people. You'll be able to encourage people. You'll be able to motivate people. And that takes us to the second point. You'll be able to understand people, know what their challenges are, know how to motivate them, bring them on board, get the best out of them, and all of that. So when people realize that you respect them, when people realize that, oh, this person is making us to be part of the of the solution then they will be committed to finding to actually working out the solution the next one is employment I mean, the, the greater employee motivation and retention in the situation where you are a social entrepreneur right they will be very very motivated why because you are solving a problem to you are, you are solving a problem to a solution that they are directly affected with you understand so they are intrinsically motivated and even extrinsic motivation deep down 
you you your very self too you you have the motivation then you'll be able to you can't give what you don't have okay now the motivation will be there to to drive and drive through now employees of social enterprise are often more motivated and engaged because they are part of mission driven organization focused uh, organization focused on making a positive impact in society making a positive impact and they are in the society they will be very much motivated to do it the next one is increased creativity just let's assume that we have social entrepreneur in this locality okay and 20 percent of these people living in this society we are all social entrepreneur so you can't compare the level of creativity of that society to where they are they have just one you understand because we are all here not complaining we are all here looking at solutions to this immediate society we are looking at solutions to the problems of this immediate society and as we are getting that done our products people coming from there definitely they are innov innovatively they will be creative in innovatively they will be great okay creativity wise they will be great another point is increased productivity another point is enhanced brand awareness and reputation social enterprise enterprises are often perceived favorably by customers when you know this product is not solely for the money right it's for my pleasure people will patronize it eh? when i know let's say for example Mm? We have a brand water in University of Abuja, and the the water reads, let's say, Uni Abuja water, and in Uni Abuja water, we also have V is it V water? I think there is a, a a brand like that V water. People would tend to go for Uni Abuja water. Why? Because they believe this is our home. Number one. Number two, they will see that this water is actually built to solve the problem of thirst for students or for the for the community. Okay. It helps in brand awareness because people are part of this problem and they are part of the solution of the problem. So they, they, they involve themselves. Number three, it could be that ah, I need to buy Uni Abuja water. Why? Because everyone working in that place, they are all students. And they are using the money to sponsor those people. Money from there is what they are using for XYZ scholarship. You see, it helps in brand awareness. And that point is access to funding and investment, regulatory and all of that. So at this point, I want to stop. So in the next video, I'll be talking about the other part of the of the of the content, which has to do with different types of social enterprise model, the CICs, the community enterprise the social firms and then i'll talk about skills at the end i think i'll, I'll, I'll just run it up then we'll come up with a ca which definitely will be driven virtually we'll come up with multiple choice question then we'll answer the question which will form part which will be our c and all of that so you have the content to read you can drop your comment if you have any observation you can definitely get in touch with me okay thank you very much